Hey, this is Greg Young, and we're just continuing along with the Mighty Moose walkthrough series. In this part of the series, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at the info window down here at the bottom, this window that says continuous tests. This is really our command center of Mighty Moose. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to try first just to introduce a compiler error. Let's just put an S here. And right now, I am running inside of Mighty Moose mode, so I actually had to do a save. Now, at any given point in time, I can always come through here and I can do a Control Shift J, and Control Shift J will toggle whether or not I'm seeing this particular window. Now, normally when I'm coding, I will actually come through here and I will deal while I'm coding without that window open. And then, for instance, I might do a save. And as we'll see after my save, everything will be working again. So again, let's just come through here and we will break this and we'll put in a compiler error. I will save again. And this time you'll notice I've got a failed. So I can do a control shift J. Now if I wanna see more info on this build error that I'm currently getting, I can just do an I and it'll give me more info. If I hit an enter, it will take me to that place in code where the build error is currently occurring. So. When I save this again, it's going to resolve that build error. Now, let's just drop in here really quickly, and we're going to throw a new exception. Now, when I do that, I will hit my Control shift s and this time it'll come through and it will test. Test failures come up in the same place as my build errors. They come up inside of this window that I can toggle again with Control shift j Now, when I have a test failure, I can hit the I key inside of that window when I have the cursor over the test. Now you can move your cursor up and down using either the arrow keys or you can use the Vim keys. This will bring me to my test output. My test output will tell me how long a test took to run, it'll tell me the type of exception or message that came out of the test runner, and of course it will give me the stack trace. Now I can use the arrow keys and as you see here on the left, it will actually move up and down through the stack trace and to the test. Now at any given point here, I can hit enter inside of there and it will bring me back to that piece of code. You'll also notice that when I have a failed test, I will get an X instead of the test frameworks icon inside of the margin. Now, let's say that I'm getting a failed test as I am in this case right here. You have to ask yourself, when do you normally want to debug a failed test. For me, I tend to want to debug, or sorry, when I, when I want to debug a test, I would want to debug it when it's failing. So one thing that we've offered here is quick access, one key access from this list to debug a test. For instance, I could be sitting over inside of this code and I realize that this test is failing. I hit Control Shift J and when I hit the D key, what it's going to do is it's not going to build, it's going to run my last build, it will automatically go through and find my test that's broken that I told it to debug, put a breakpoint at the first line in that test, and fire up the debugger on my last run. This can save considerable time when we're dealing especially with builds that are taking slightly longer, even on incremental build, it's common to see it take 10 or 15 seconds to be able to get to this point in debugging. Now, let me just drop through this. Again, when we have failed tests, we can also just do a control shift J and from this main line here, if I hit enter on this, it will take me to the place in code where this was occurring as well. This info window is really your main viewpoint into what's going on in code throughout the system. Now, let this run really quick and I am just going to switch very quickly into maniac moose mode. So now that I'm in maniac moose mode, we can see that this window basically operates the same way. The difference being, I don't have to save before I get information up here. This is extremely useful for us to be dealing with because I can just sit here and type and as I start seeing these failures that are occurring, I can just very quickly jump right in and see what the information is. So this is just a quick walkthrough on this informational window and some of the things that it can tell us. Whether it be 
failing test and we can go through and look at information or jump in and very quickly debug or whether it's build errors and being able to quickly navigate through them. I hope you guys have enjoyed this section and we'll be moving right along to the next. Thank you.